After 32 impossibly long years, the Detroit Lions not only got to host a home playoff game, not only host that game, but host the game against our former franchise quarterback. After 32 years, the Detroit Lions can celebrate a postseason victory. Guys, I got a lot to say, and I'm coming for every single one of you. Matt Stafford's... And that's all I'm going to say about y'all. So, guys, this is the Hat and Beard Show. I'm Hat and Beard. I'm here to say the quiet part out loud, and we got quite a few things to say. Let's get into it, fellas. We're going to get up, and on the way up, we're going to bite a kneecap off. Doesn't matter if you have one ass cheek and three toes. I will beat your ass. Welcome back to the Hat and Beard Show, guys. We got a lot to talk about. The playoffs, the wild card round is done, and on to the divisional round. You got the top four teams, seeds one through four in the AFC advancing. Not a lot of excitement there, but in the NFC, we've seen a seven seed finally pull off a victory with the Packers stealing our revenge narrative away from us but guys i'm not mad about the packers beating the cowboys because frankly the cowboys not my team and with america's team now out of the way it paves the way for the detroit lions fandom our bandwagon just got so much bigger you can feel america rooting for us look jordan love's got a cool story look baker mayfield jared goff have a lot of comparisons a lot of parallel storylines between the two of them you love to see the fact that one of those two guys will be in an nfc championship game but guys guys the biggest story the biggest story this weekend at least for us was after 32 years we finally won a playoff game at home in front of the Ford Field crowd where the Ford Field effect was in full swing. The building was vibrating. There was electricity in the air. And the Lions Nation did exactly what they needed to do to get into Matt Stafford's head. They harassed him constantly all game long as loud as they possibly could we did exactly what we needed to do and welcomed our prodigal son back to a chorus full of boos any of you who were on the i'm not going to boo matt stafford matt stafford did a lot for us in 12 years he never brought us a division title and never could win a playoff game in detroit well we must respect the pad stafford guys I watched Pad Stafford for 12 years here in Detroit do exactly what he did Sunday night in Detroit. Overinflate his statistics, play a relatively good game, throw for well over 300 yards, but in the end, he still came up short. He'll always come up short because that's who Matt Stafford is. He eased his way into a Super Bowl, riding the coattails of Sean McVay, and hitting exactly when the iron was hot for the LA Rams. Hell, you probably could have put my grandmother back there and she would have won a Super Bowl for the LA Rams that season. Matt Stafford, in his press conference, summed up exactly, you gotta pay attention to what the guy says, but he summed up exactly what is wrong with Matt Stafford in his press conference after the game. He said that he's happy for those guys, meaning the guys that he played with prior to leaving Detroit, your Taylor Deckers, your Frank Ragnows, and so on. But he didn't say he was happy for the city of Detroit. And what we see here is the big hard line difference between Pad Statford and the current regime of the Detroit Lions headed up by Brad Holmes, Dan Campbell, and Jared Goff. Every single player in the Lions organization, with the exception of maybe a loudmouth guy like Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, who I'm still happy to have on the roster because of his talent level and his experience, every single guy, whenever you see them in press conferences are always talking about the city of Detroit, the people of Detroit, how they realize what this team means to us, okay? As I said before, Detroit has been a broken down, forgotten, kicked in the teeth city. We went from being the richest city in the United States in the 50s, 60s, and 40s, up to 49 was really the high watermark of Detroit being a financial powerhouse. 
considered the Paris of the Midwest, to a turd sandwich that it is now. It's been forgotten, run over, left in the shadows to be mocked and pointed at as that is not what you want to be. The Lions were the exact same franchise. The Lions were the exact same franchise as the Detroit, the city of Detroit. Nobody wanted to come here. You were left for dead here. People made jokes about Motor City Dan Campbell. He was a caveman, a Neanderthal. And now you see all of his messages are starting to really hit home. Everything Dan Campbell has said, all of the quotes, the kneecaps, I don't care if you got one ass cheek and three toes, I don't care if your name's Pad Stafford, I will beat your ass. And that's exactly what we've done. We brought in the reject, Jared Goff. He couldn't win the big game. Jared Goff can't do it. He can't. He can take your team. He can pile the team to a Super Bowl, but he's a system quarterback. He ain't nothing without Sean McVay. What did he do? Took it to Sean McVay. We invited them to come to our house. Come on in here, fellas. Come on to the Ford Field House of Horrors and see exactly what everybody else has been talking about. You don't want to go to Ford Field. You don't want to play in Ford Field. You don't want... The Lions fandom, you don't want to go into the Lions Den, baby, because we're coming with everything. We're the 12th man. Our team's sick. We got, we got dogs out here playing. And then you pile in 50,000 screaming banshee Detroit Lions fans. Screaming with every bit of their energy, right? Every bit of their soul to cheer on their team because they are us. The Lions organization is the same as the people of Detroit, the same as the people of this whole state, all right? The way they go is the way we go. Their success is our success, and I fucking love it, all right? And Pad Statford did exactly what he did for 12 years in Detroit, overinflated his stats, got his shit smashed on the field. Oh, he's so tough, his hand was bleeding. Oh, he's so tough. He definitely had a concussion. After Lehman Hutch just sandwiched him. Oh, he's so good. Look at his no-look passes. Which I will admit, the league definitely sucks Patty Mahomes schlong there way more than they ever did Matt Stafford. Matt Stafford has been making them sidearm throws that Patrick Mahomes has been making. He's been doing it for years in Detroit. But because he was in Detroit, he didn't get any of the respect, right? And I'm not going to give him any respect now. Look, the long and short of it is this. Matt Stafford... Is directed at all of you Stafford stands, right? All of you guys, oh, you got to respect what he did. He didn't do dick squiddly, all right? He had a Hall of Fame wide receiver to throw to for the majority of his career, okay? And because he has to air it out, he never had a 1,000-yard rusher. I'm not saying we had the most talent at running back those years. But as the San Francisco 49ers have proven time and time again, you just need a scheme. Yeah, the Niners got CMC. But the Niners could put anybody back there, right? And they could they could put anybody back there right now and have a thousand yard rusher on the season because the scheme works, because the players are there, right? Because they don't feel the need to air it out all day long, regardless of the game situation. Yeah, they have a sweet defense. The Lions never really had that, but it could have been there. It should have been there. Instead, Pad Stafford did exactly that. Padded his stats, and when he didn't want to get on the Rah, rah, Detroit bandwagon. Let's change this franchise from the top down. He was the only member of the old guard that didn't have the backbone to see it through. Taylor Decker did. Frank Ragnow did. Those guys were brought in by Robert Quinn and Matt Patricia. You think they're proud of that? Nah, but they knew what Dan Campbell was capable of. They knew the direction that Brad Holmes wanted to take this team in. And what did Matt Stafford do? Demanded a trade, ran out to California, got a bunch of big-ass, goofy fucking white teeth, and now him and his wife have the fucking gall to stand there and say, I can't believe the Lions fandom didn't respect us. I can't believe they didn't open us or welcome us with open arms. Really? Your first season away from here, you won a Super Bowl. What did you expect from us, man? We gave you your condolences. We cheered you on during your playoff run. We were happy to see you get your Super Bowl. But now... Now it's us, man. Now it's personal. I can't root for you when you come to my team, to my house, to try and take out my playoff team, my three seed, my NFC North champions. Nah, that ain't cool with me, man. You could go fuck yourself, Matt Stafford. You and your wife. All of you can go back to the West Coast with your coastal elites and your media engine behind you, and you can tell everybody, oh, yeah, I'm Matt Stafford. 
I was the quarterback of the Lions for over a decade. And then when they made the playoffs for the first time in uh, three, six, uh, four, seven years, when they had their first home playoff game in 32 years, their first win in playoff win in 32 years. This is our team, bro. And you ain't part of it, man. And I don't want you here. I was never going to root for you coming back here, dude. And the fans did exactly what they should. So everybody who booed Matt Stafford, I got you, bro. You and me, we won in the same. We know what we're here for. We know what we're here to root for. We know what we want out of this Lions organization. All of you Matt Stafford stands, though, nah, get out of here, bro. I ain't here for that. I ain't here for that right now. I ain't here for you and your pad Stafford love and self. Uh, look, Jared Goff's the man. He's our quarterback, and I'm here to support it. Let's roll. Now, all that being said, let's talk briefly about the game. It was electric. It was awesome. It was the only game of the weekend that wasn't a complete blowout and a total collapse. It was a lot closer than I wanted it to be, and we only managed to eke out three points in the second half. Our running game was bottled up. David Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs, although they were able to score touchdowns, their productivity wasn't necessarily there. Montgomery did a solid job early on, but then we kind of started to get away from it. Goff did, however, go 10 for 10 and was looking electric. All of our weapons showed up. Even Sam Laporta with a bum knee comes in and scores a touchdown. What a great job. What just an electric, amazing job. Our draft class. Again, our big three rookies out of this draft. And look, Jack Campbell's coming along. Okay, Jack Campbell's coming along. But when you look at Ja, Brian Branch, and Sam Laporta, those guys are just knocking it out of the park, man. How truly lucky we are that Brian Branch who, if you did a redraft, would probably be a top 10, top 15 pick, was able to slide out of the first round. Not only that, we passed on him with our first pick in the second round. We, put, took, we, we picked up Sam Laporta because Brad Holmes knew something about Sam Laporta. But this rookie draft class has been sensational. Between Dalton Kincaid and uh, uh, Sam Laporta, man, those guys are just knocking it out of the park, dude. I know there's a handful of other guys. But really, I mean, big plays, big touchdowns out of all of them. Sam Laporta, second team all pro. You got to love it, dude. He's on a Hall of Fame career trajectory. Our defense did what we set out to do all season long, man. Look, the Rams had an electric running game. Kyron Williams is a very good running back, and their offensive line has the hog bollies with enough lead in their ass to move people and make holes for their running back to, to blow through. And we stood tall, dude. Now, Sean McVay is a little trigger happy on getting away from the run. Probably because he has Matt Stafford in his ear saying, I can do it, I can do it. I can throw for over 300 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions, get sacked twice, smashed around in the pocket, get bloodied, battered, and broken, and still come up one point short because that is how my entire career has gone. Just ask all these 60,000 people screaming behind me. And the Lions did exactly what I thought they were going to do as far as the wide receiver threats were concerned. Look, our defense doesn't have the corners to match up against wide receivers. We're safety strong, but our corners are lackluster. Cameron Sutton played solid all season long, but the last few weeks he's just been getting torched, been taken advantage of. The fluidity in his hips, his ability to cut, pivot, and change direction isn't really there. But at least he's cerebral and can cover up for it and make you know the tip passes instead of the INT. He's spinning his head around to not get flagged for PI, right? He's making good enough... Good enough plays, obviously you'd want more out of it. And we'll talk about addressing that position or how the Lions can better their secondary a lot in this offseason because pretty soon in the offseason, man, oh, man, that's like my favorite time of year. But the Lions did exactly what we've been doing for the past few weeks. Look, dating back to the first Minnesota game, you had Minnesota, Dallas, Minnesota, and now the Rams, right? For the last four weeks, we have done one thing against all these teams. All of those teams have dynamic wide receiver threats Elite level wide receivers with Justin Jefferson, Cooper Cup, and CeeDee Lamb, and then just under elite talent with, you know, the, the Minnesota Vikings have Jordan Addison. The Cowboys have both Michael Gallup and Brandon Cooks. And then the Rams have Puka Nakua to really they they all these teams have dynamic wide receiving threats. So the Lions have done a solid job with taking away one of those, right? They know who they are as a team. We're going to run the ball. We're going to hit you in the mouth. We're going to stop the run, and we're going to hit you in the mouth. And then on defense, in the secondary, we're going to just take away one of your players. We're going to say, Brian Branch, go stop Cooper Cup. Every time Cooper Cup's on the field, you're on him, like white on rice, like stink on shit, and that's exactly what he did. He basically isolated Cooper Cup and took him away from the game. Unfortunately, then with a talent like Puka Nakua, 
he's going to go electric. But again, Matt Stafford feeding the rock to his dynamic players, right? Matt Stafford throwing the ball all over the place. Matt Stafford, 350-plus yards. Matt Stafford still coming up one point short in a divisional round. Because they ain't a team, dude. We are a team. You see Goff's distribution of the rock. You see Goff getting the ball to whoever was open, making clutch Jared Goff throws. St. Brown doing St. Brown things. Hutch getting two sacks. Yeah, I know. The one Stafford fell over. But, man, was that not just vintage Matt Stafford tripping on Ford Field? Literally tripping on Ford Field. God, it was just watching that game was like watching vintage Matt Stafford. Is that how everybody felt? All 31 other teams that had to play against him for 12 years? Well, we were over there rooting for him, trying to trying to build him up because of a stat- statistical powerhouse. The rest of the teams all seen exactly what we've seen, that he just wasn't that good. Because, I mean, it was just vintage Stafford, dude. I've seen that guy play for 12 years, and that's exactly who they got, man, was vintage Matt Stafford. Our offensive line did an outstanding job locking down Aaron Donald. Penny Sewell, man, that guy is so good. Our interior offensive line, led by Frank Ragnow, Jonah Jackson, and Graham Glasgow, those guys are so good to be able to manhandle that future Hall of Famer, Aaron Donald, the way we did. We kept golf clean. Early on in the game, Goff had enough time to do your taxes and make a ham sandwich and bang Sean McVay's wife. It was amazing. I, 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 I'm still kind of, honestly, honestly, guys, I'm still kind of in shock. I, this is, if last week was uncharted waters, if last week we were the Franklin expedition, then this week it's the endeavor, right? Grossly uncharted areas, just Places we've never been. I'm 35 years old, man. This is all new for me. And I'm sure it's new for the majority of y'all based on analytics and the average age breakdown of the viewers of my channel. This is so weird, man. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do with my hands. I don't know what to do with my face. I keep expecting to wake up and it's training camp. And this whole season was just just a fever dream, right? I don't know what to do. I'm over the moon. I'm ecstatic. I'm so ecstatic that the cold isn't really even bothering me right now. I'm so happy for the Detroit Lions, man. I'm trying to contain my enthusiasm. I don't want to hang, get hung up on the, well, we've already beaten the Tampa Bay Bucks. Well, I don't know who the Bay Bucks are, but the Tampa Buccaneers, yeah, we did beat them. There's, there's, no, there's no Tampa Bay. There's, there's no Tampa Bay. It's Tampa, Florida. I don't know why they're Tampa Bay Buccaneers, but they're the Bay Buccaneers of Tampa. I don't want to get hung up on our 20 to 6 victory over the Buccaneers early on. Yeah, we went down to down to Tampa and really took it to them in their own house. That was a little bit different of a team, and it's hard to beat a team multiple times in one season. Just look at our divisional opponents, right? We split with all of them except for Minnesota. We'll talk more about it in tomorrow's video, but there are some things that I'm 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 a little I don't want to say hesitant, but nervous. This is a playoff team. This is a playoff team, man. And the Bucs are hot right now, dude. Baker Mayfield, man. Baker Mayfield is having a redemption arc similar to Jared Goff. Jared Goff just didn't have to go through so many teams and have so many off-the-field issues because Jared Goff's personality is greatly different than Baker Mayfield. I got to admit, guys, I myself, I like Baker Mayfield, man. I got to give the guy credit, dude. He's He's been through it, man. He has been through it, and he's trying to make the absolute best of it, but... I know what's going to happen this weekend, and Baker Mayfield's little Cinderella story is going to come to a abrupt end when Road to Super Bowl run through Ford Field. Green Bay is going to do us a big solid, knock off the big bad 49ers in the divisional round, and then they got to come back here to the Ford Field House of Horrors. We're going to have two NFC North teams in the NFC Championship game. The Lions at Ford Field hosting an NFC Championship game. Man, I'm trying to not think too far down the road. I just want to beat the Bucks so bad. I just want to beat the Bucks so bad, guys. I want to beat the Bucks so bad. We'll talk more about it later. That's all I really got for you tonight. Uh, stay out of trouble. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. Keep your stick on the ice. If uh, she doesn't find you handsome, at least she'll find you handy. That's going to do it for me. I've been Hattenbeard. You've been an attentive audience. <laughs> Frig off. Oh, yeah. And just to be absolutely clear... Fuck you, Matt Stafford.